Recently, Hamadi Jabali, the Prime Minister of Tunisia, visited Brussels to meet with the European Commission's President, Jose Manuel Barroso, to discuss the financial aid that Europe is going to be giving Tunisia for its hopeful transition to democracy. Now, this is a continuation of funding that Europe has been giving countries like Egypt and Tunisia post what was popularly known as the Arab Spring. We went out on the streets of Brussels to ask people what they thought about Europe giving financial aid to countries that have Islamic groups in government. As a relatively rich uh, region, we should be we should be providing that funding outside of the the political um, the political situation. In the interest of the society at large, we should be continuing with strings attached. Maybe it's, it it seems that perhaps sometimes European states and Western states feel that they need to intervene in places where they don't necessarily understand the entirety of the situation, and it seems that that is what's occurring when people want to intervene and create democracy in places maybe they don't understand fully how the systems exist in those places. It's the question actually, uh, is that government uh, chosen by uh, people or just by the, some uh, other powers? And uh, definitely, in my opinion, we should support such uh, countries in, uh, in uh, Arabic countries. But when we are speaking about uh, Islamic group in, in, in government, uh, it's hard issue to tackle because uh, how can we be sure that these uh, funds will be distributed in the right way, for example? We need stability uh, around Europe and we have um, our economic uh, relations are very strong and the EU is a big partner for all these countries and the EU should be very, very much involved into securing a stable uh, neighborhood. The European Union has agreed to give Tunisia 25 million euros over the next four years. This money is intended to directly fund Tunisia's judiciary system in hopes of strengthening it and making it more independent of outside influences. So should conditions be set for how financial aid is spent? We could maybe expect closer monitoring, try to exclude uh, organizations that are to the extreme and try to help the society at large, maybe NGOs, um, real civil organizations that are that work for the good of the people. We should try to, to drive those countries into building the same type of democracy as we have here. So we should have some checks and balances when we provide some financial support for them to go into a certain direction. If, if they're linked to, to humanitarian projects, I don't think there should be conditions attached to, to that funding. They're also only giving specific funding to the groups that they approve of in those countries. Which maybe it's, it's not the place of a foreign country or a foreign body to involve themselves in politics that they're not completely in understanding of. Maybe, if, yeah, to, to give money it's, can be uh, a way to control uh, the situation there. Yes, yes, then I would say, yeah, we, we should keep contact with them and not uh, ignore them completely it can be well, dangerous. There should be conditions that are, are established from both countries. So maybe Tunisia can, uh, I don't know, establish some conditions, but also us, we have to, to, to establish conditions that makes a win-win situation for both countries. It's clear from this recent financial package to Tunisia that Europe still has hopes for the emergence of democracies in the Arab Spring countries. What's not yet clear is whether these hopes will come to fruition, something that can only be told with time. Robin Creswell, JN1, Brussels.